Hello folks and welcome to Fallout Shelter. Brian here once again for Touch Gameplay. I'm sure you may or may not know Fallout Shelter was the surprise announcement at E3 during the Fallout 4 presentation by Bester. Um, it is taking the App Store by storm by briefly going to number one spot and uh, knocking out the likes of Candy Crush, Clash of Kangs, God's War etc etc before it has slipped down the chart since to about 4th and ninth, depending on the chart you're looking at at the present moment. Now, I've been playing for that for about two, about a week now, or possibly two weeks since it came out in E3. Um, and I we're going to sort of give you a brief rundown of how the game plays um, and show you some of the features of the game. So, without further ado, we shall enter the vote 32. Now, you have to I have to apologise. If I cough because I'm suffering from a oh dear, excuse me, excuse me, I'm suffering from a cold at present moment, so please bear with me if I cough or splutter when I'm doing this video. I've got to get it done because I wanted to show you guys what it's like. Okay, here we go. Right, let me just collect these resources first because I don't want to run short and explain to you how the game runs, etc., etc. Okay, right. Brief tour of the game, okay, uh, examples of the game. Brief, brief tour, brief tour, that's it, brief tour. Okay, so we have power, like food and water in that order of, of importance. Power is the thing that powers basically your vault, which you're looking at, which... And without power, then you're building your rooms, will shut down. And if they are your food and water producing rooms, then you can get in some serious trouble. So, you need to make sure that's been worked, so you need to make sure you've got plenty of power. Next next comes food, and once again, with no food, then your dwellers will start, will start uh, taking damage on their health. Once they get down to zero, then they will die, and the only way to get them back, it will be by using the caps, which is to see there at the top, the top right hand side of the screen. And finally, water. Once again, if you come low, if you run low in water, then your guys, sorry, your dwellers will start taking radiation poisoning, and after so much, then they once again will die. And I say, once again, to revive them, you will have to pay caps, and that can get expensive if you have a very high level dweller in your vault, which you want to try and keep alive. Now, as you can see here, I've got a look, I've got two green boxes flashing up on the screen at the present moment. Uh, that one being my water. And that one over there being my food at present moment, okay? So by clicking on that, I then collect that food and water into my resource area. So there we go. Let's look a little bit more resources to time me over. Now, the work, it works by the following principle. is In this case, every about minute or so, I will generate 40 water, okay? And for my uh, food, about one minute... But about over a minute or so, I get 40 food for my uh, okay, just that 40 food. So every, and then in my power, about oh, just about near generated here. Okay, collect my water, collect my power. There we go. About every two minutes on that particular room, I get 49. And in this room, it's about another 40 or minute, 40 or seconds, not minutes. I'll get 49 uh, power in that room as well. So say these three, these. Though I'll say these buildings, these these rooms, are your most important area for generating resources, and you need to make sure you've got enough of these in your vault to keep your uh, dwellers alive. Now, each vault can take over two can take up to 200 people maximum, and after that, you can't take any more. But believe me, that will probably take a while to you, for you to get there if you are being very careful with your vault. Let me just collect that more resources there. Because the thing with this game is you can't rush the game. And I've heard of people who have rushed the game, so to speak, try to, and it's bit them on the ass later on down the line. You can treat this game more like a seesaw, to be honest, in the other part, in the other part of it. And that's where you've got to be finely balanced. If you go too far to left or too far to right, the seesaw will tip over. Just like, and this is the same, same principle in this game. I've uh, just got a random event here. And let me just sort that out. There we go, the random event. That will happen in your vault. And these can be fires, 
uh, infestations from roaches, which are can be fatal to your uh, vault if you don't do handling very quickly, and also random raider attacks as well. So we'll just do do that. One smart thing about um, events in this game is if you have an event in a room where there's nobody about, then you can assign people into a room to deal with the event. And once the event is over, the people will actually go back to where they originally came from. So you don't have to try and remember where they came from. The game will send them back to their to their original rooms which they're working in, which is quite nice. Okay, so can I just collect my resources there? Now, just let me scroll over here. Now, over here is what we call this is one room which generates med packs for radiation poisoning. And every so many minutes, this one will generate that's you know two med packs every 33 minutes. But say so once again, if you have the more people in there with the with a high intelligence skill, the shorter the time will be I have to wait. Let me just collect some of these again. Food and water. Sorry, that'd be electricity and food. There we go. And down here, and you can see is where I would have simpax. Uh, these are for cure, these are for healing in my dwellers. So this room would generate three simpax. Um, every three minutes, roughly, and that one was sort of about a minute left before that generates two. And these are essential, especially when you're getting raided, because your dwellers will take damage, and if you don't heal them uh, during a raid, you could possibly lose them, and that would cost you caps. And the caps, it says once again, that C at the top of there. And you say a, a good high um, dweller can cost you a lot of caps, so the last thing you want to do is be running short on caps or simpax. If you're gonna if you're running low in simpax sorry, sorry I should say if you're running low on um, uh, caps then you don't want to be running low on simpax because otherwise if you can't revive your dweller or you want to then you're gonna have to remove them as quick as can because the other dwellers will take a disliking to having dead bodies in their room <laughs> as you can imagine. I'm just collecting my food there. Okay and now next thing you can see is these look at icons here Above the, above the dwellers, that means they level up. Every time they're working in a particular room, a producing room, should say, then they will level up. So they used to level level 30. And every time they level up, you get caps, which is most important. And the the higher level, the more the more health that they will have. So that means they can survive longer. But I say once again, if they do die, it costs you more caps to revive them. So you always make sure you try and keep them alive, if possible, because you can also use them to go out in the wasteland area. More of that later. Let me just uh, re level up my characters. So you can see, every time I get them, every time I level up, I get caps, which is very, very handy. And I've just got some pack there collected. And some more caps there, like so. There we go. Okay, and now here is my training area. Now these guys are leveling up their skills at present moment. He's just leveled up one skill. There we go. And this one's leveled up a skill as well. That's his ability, the agility there, just leveled up to one. So that's excellent. Just collect my power again and level up my sims. Sorry, I keep what comes sims. Do well, that's, that's better. Go on, get it right, Brian, get it right. Just click, there we go. And more power there. There we go. Now, you can see here, I'm doing quite well, I would say, because the thing with this game is a lot of people are having, having the bump problem. And that is where they start off doing very well, and then all of a sudden they start running out of resources. And that's probably because I think it's when they start having babies. Yes, you can actually get the sim, sorry, the dwellers together and to create babies. And this is the way you get more dwellers into your vault, apart from the uh, registration down there, of course. Um, and you do this simply by, let me find a couple of people I want to use. Now, what I always find with, uh, um, with dwellers, if they are not feeling too bright, or feeling they look a bit depressed, then... You can see here, you come down, and okay, we've got two candidates I can use here. Uh, Victoria and Josh. Okay, now he's in the power plant, and she's in a science station. So I'm going to find him. Let's go find Josh first, and he is that green guy. Oh, I've missed him. Let's try again. Let's find Josh. Okay, come down, down, down again. Come okay, on, matey. Where are we There's Josh. He's there. There you go. Highlight him. Bring across into there. Oops. Nope. Thank you. Bring across into there. Thank you. You go back into there, thank you very much. And we're looking for one more. Looking for a lady. And let's find, come back down. And just and see what we've got. We can use, we can use Victoria Prow. Um, let's see now. Now, power plant. I'll use Emma, Emma Page. 
and she is hiding there, there we go, and I put her into there, like so, and there we go. Now what happened after a while, you can actually zoom into here, and we show you what happens. Now, let me just collect my resources, uh, while we're waiting for them to uh, start uh, hitting it off, so to speak. There we go, collect my resources, and let me just zoom into here. And what happens is after a while, is here we go, we get to see them sort of flirting with each other. Yes. Yes, I'm afraid you got to use your chat up lines, sort of longer lines of. And let's see what Emma and Josh will come out with next. I love talking to you! There we go, that swings like, and. Hang on, let's see what else we can come out with. Come on, folks, what are we going to come out with next? Because some of these chat up lines are cheesy. I'm not a photograph, but I can picture you and me together. Oh, God, boy, I mean. Yes, the chat up lines are cheesy as hell but are funny to watch. And as I say, when these two get it together and they will uh, um, end up having it, well, basically, and we will become pregnant and afterwards you give birth to either a boy or a girl. And what's been catching people out, I think, is that uh, if they've been having like five or six kids knocking about in the uh, in the vault, because for a while they are children and eventually grow up to adults, the children will take loads more resources than adults will, and I think this has been catching people out, so to speak. And oh dear, as I say, let's listen to it as they will decide to hit it off some point in maybe the next few minutes or so. Okay, it very happens very quickly, I must admit. Okay, so let's just collect some more resources, like so. There we go. Oh, we've got fire here, but once again, we can have that dealt with by the people in that room, so not too much already there to sort out. Now, let's see, fires are random, so are the roach infestations, they're random, and so the raids. And so this is something which I recommend, is if you're going to put the game down for a few minutes, so if you're going to make yourself some tea or make yourself a cup of tea or something like that, um, make sure you put the game into menu mode or turn the tablet off. Because if you have a, like a um, a roach infestation or get raided, um, you can end up finding your vault can be dead in a matter of minutes or seconds, especially a roach one, because they can clear out a roach infestation, can literally clear out a room within seconds, killing all your dwellers. And the last thing you want is to be losing dwellers, especially in a in a room, as I say, in a resource in a resource producing room. And so that's the last thing you want. So make sure if you are going to play the game, is that you put it into menu mode, like so. So you go back into menu mode. So then at least you don't get any problems. So there you go. Now the game will still run, but you won't get any problems. So go back to menu mode like this here. And then at least you're safe before you go back to then go back to vault again. And you can carry on from where you left off. It will still use resources, but you won't have any random events happen while you are away. Which is what you want to have, which you, which you want, which which is what you want. There, there, there. Okay. Go back to my photo. There we go. Okay. Let's just collect my resources. I've got some of my characters there. Uh, there we go. Like so. One thing also, which I'm not going to show you. Oops. Hang on. Are they get, are they, oh, and hey, look, folks. Here we go. And they are getting it down. They're getting it off. And we're going to have some. There we go. They they are doing the business, so so to speak, uh, jumping on jumping on bones, etc., etc. We need any more? And in a minute, we shall see both of them arrive. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. we've got. He's looking happy for himself, and she's looking rather pregnant. And you can see he's. Uh, I don't know why the 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 uh, face on him. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. If that's like he's tired or something. I have no idea. But as you see, Emma is now one truly pregnant. And in about three or four hours, she will give birth. It, it happens that quick in this game, and believe me. So, <laughs> and that is what catches people, and that is what I think catches people out, is having lots of ladies pregnant, they give birth, and they can't sustain the um, demand on resources at the time being. So, let's put these guys back, if I can remember where they went. I think he went in there, like so. Yep, he went in there, and she went in the science station, I think. Let's see where can it's just useful anywhere. No, nope. Oh, she could go there. Uh, or there. No, get back in there as well. Put it back in there. So there we go. Yes, and she can still work while she's pregnant. But if there's an event such as a fire, or I see fire, a roach infestation, or a raid attack, and then she will go and hide as well. Like she will go and hide. And same thing applies to children that are knocking about when you have when the uh, 
when your uh, women, women, when your ladies give birth, you have the children that will run about the vault for a brief while, and they too will hide in the um, hide in the residential areas, well, should say the bunker bed areas, while there is an event going on. Okay, now moving on to the wasteland area. This is where I've got two people at the present moment out in the wastelands exploring their areas at the present moment and as you can see I've got this this one character Sarah who's been out for five hours so far and she has got caps of 426 she's found being leveling herself up and she found some weapons for us as you can see we have a pistol a shotgun another pistol a BB gun and also a, a hunting rifle and uh, um, you can leave them out as long as you like, but make sure you have got um, some medical, you know, say you've got um, sim packs with them so they can heal themselves, or radiation poisoning packs so they can heal themselves to get radiated poisoning because if they die, you can revive them if they die in the, in the wastelands, but once again, it costs you. And, and at level 40, she will be pretty expensive to revive, especially with all these nice weapons that she's got. So, what I'm going to do, because she is getting low on health, I mean, I'm going to recall her. Let's see what she does. So we've got this giant ant worker. What she can do? She killed it, and she suffered damage, and also has gained 510 experience points. But let's recall her because I could do them weapons. So she'll be back in roughly two hours, real time that is. And that's look at my other guy as well, my one that's out there exploring. And she has found, uh, well, she's uh, Dave. Sorry, David has found nightwear, um, a pistol, sc rusty scoped 44. BB Gulps, go back to there again. That's it. Next character, there you go. Next character, please. Thank you. BB Gun and a couple more pistols as well. So, and I'm going to recall him as well. And he'll be back. So, if we go recall, and he'll be back about an hour 48. And they can be, I say, they can be out as long as you like, but make sure you have given them enough uh, simpax to heal themselves if they get low. Um, but I said, the longer they're out, the more chance they can get uh, good stuff, but more chance they can get actually killed as well. And there's no limit to how many people you can send out. You can send as many out as you like. And that's something else, because if you are running low on food and water by sending out your dwellers into wasteland, your actually your demand will slightly decrease. So if you are running low, send them out. But make sure you do give them some armor and some weapons to defend themselves, or if you are being sadistic and want to kill them, then send them out and just let them die in the wasteland. Save them dying in the uh, room. <coughs> Excuse me. Time same, same them dying in the vault, and we have to remove them because your dwellers don't like dead bodies in the vault. Of course. Let me just level up there. Okay, there we go. Right, moving on. Now we got, we got, we have here is our objects. Okay, ob objectives. Sorry, obje objectives. And these consist of here for this one. I got to find five. Got I got to make five ladies pregnant. Uh, raise the ability of five dwellers by what? Um, and also send five words to wasteland. As you can see, I have basically nearly um, got. I nearly done my uh, rise my ability, and I've nearly uh, done my dwellers. And as you can see, because I've just got every pregnant, I've now need to find. F I need to get another four females pregnant, and uh, before I can collect my caps on each of these objectives. Sometimes the objectives will give you lunch boxes, and these lunch boxes will give you. Uh, more resources, uh, caps, and also sometimes a rare item such as a weapon, clothing, or even a dweller with a very high stats. So I can't show you one at the present moment because I haven't got any. Daily report, and you see I've been playing now for four days uh, straight so far on this particular vault, and I've been doing so far not too bad. Um, I've um, been keeping a very high score, so I've been getting 110, 130, 110, 130 caps per day on this particular vault. I've got over six hours to go before I can claim some more, hopefully, uh, caps. If I keep this foot going for seven days, by the seventh day I will get a lunchbox. Now you're saying, what are lunchboxes? Well, lunchboxes are these things which you can buy. You can either buy them by making a small purchase, or you can have you can win them by doing objectives as well. And they say, once again, these contain four Fallout Shelter cards, which will be either food, water, power, or three. Um, caps as well, which you can use to build stuff with, and possibly a rare item being a weapon, um, a particular dweller or uniform. 
Now, the caps, as you can see up here, now this is where I can build my particular items. You can see, show you what I've got and what to save for, and what uh, and what they use for, and, and what, what that room produces. Um, at the present moment, I'm now heading towards unlocking my next one here. 40 dwells need, needed to unlock my lounge. I've unlocked my working areas, so some training areas. You can see here I've got endurance, intelligence, perception, and ability. And each of these will allow my dwellers to gain stats in each of them areas if they're working in that particular room. And we're going right up to where, if we when we get 100 dwellers, we then we open the nuclear cola bottler. I have no idea what it is, but I presume it is to do with the Fallout series, so as I should say, I've never played Fallout at all, so this is completely all new to me, what the Fallout world universe is like. Okay, so... This is the Caps area, whoops, the Caps, sorry. The Caps area is where we've... Whoa, we've got fire, let me just sort out this fire. Let me just get some people. So let me just put that one down there like so, and that one down there like so, there we go. Now the thing about, as I say, I might have told you this already or not, that when there's a fire, um, the people that respond, that you respond to it, will go to the specific areas and they will put out the fire, like so. Go on, down you go. Down you, down there. Oops. Down there, there you go. And, oh, this fire's moving about a bit. Go up there, go up there as well, that's it. And what they do is, uh, when they respond to the fire, let's put some more people in there if we can. Go. Collect that resource. And put some people in there as well, because I need to get in there. Come on, in you go. Sort it out. That's it. There we go. What the great thing is about events is once you've finished, providing you've not lost any people, as well, is that the people that revolved evolved uh, in the event will then go back to what they did be previous. So, once this fire has gone out, you watch what happens next. Just collect my resources. Close that. There we go. And there we go. And you know, we're just about done, are we? Yes, I think we are. There we go, and you watch what happens, now everybody goes back to what they're doing, which is quite handy, so if you happen to be a lot of people around in an instant, uh, the game will remember where they were work previously, and send them back to what they're doing, so that's quite good. Now, to say, yes, caps is the main point of it, no, caps, then he allows you, caps allows you, sorry, to build stuff, like, you say, allows you to build stuff, and I can find what's work body, back to it, there you go, so I can, I can build for 600 caps, a classroom, fitness room, uh, 600 caps of fitness room, 750 classroom, armory for 750, 750, weight room, 1,050, uh, radio studio, 750, 500, and so the caps are what you use to upgrade and make new areas as well as moving rocks like this. There we go. So we always need plenty of caps, but always make sure to have some spare caps available, as I say, if you end up losing your dwellers and you want to revive them because it will be expensive. But that is a tour of uh, say sh Fallout Shelter. It's a, a game which does require a lot of attention because it isn't as simple as it looks. I mean, I'm doing, I've gone over the bump, so to speak, and my vote is not doing too bad. I mean, I've seen other people that have got way more people in their vote than I have for how long I've been playing it for. But, you know, I aren't rushing it, it's doing me fine so far. But as I say, that is Fallout Shelter. It is a very durable game. If you're into things like Tiny Tower, um, this is its replacement. Why I say it's replacement? Because this is more involved. Um, you've got to really think about what you're going to do next. Plan ahead, definitely, by about three or four steps before you actually do it. So that you don't end up having a resource shortage problem. So there you go, folks. That's Fallout Shelter. And say thanks for watching. And I will hope I will see you again soon for another video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And have a good evening, good day, good day, or wherever you are at present moment in the world. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.